What's going on guys, it's Run Gem Militia, and welcome to another Python tutorial, and in this tutorial what I'm going to be showing you are imports, and what we can use with imports, and how they make our programming, uh, or our programs faster and shorter. So, the syntax for importing is just import all lowercase, it should turn orange, um, and what we're going to be using import for is uh, importing, oh, obviously, but uh, importing libraries from the files of uh, Python. And if you don't know what a library is, it's when you install Python, you have a bunch of these libraries. And what they do is they hold code and certain functions, such as math. If you import math, which we're going to be doing today, uh, it holds certain functions like square roots, uh, let's see, pi, or logarithms, stuff like that, you know. Let's say you're trying to do some the circumference of a circle, and you want to do a program, blah blah blah. Just import math, and then you would uh, you know use some stuff like that. You just math.py, or let's say you were trying to do some exponential growth or exponential decay, and you would do a logarithm. Uh, that would be what you would use to uh, speed up your coding and make it a lot shorter. And what what I mean by a lot shorter is if you did not have the math function, let's say we wanted to do a logarithm, we would have to write out all of that, um, all of that code just to do a logarithm. Whereas here, we can just import math and use the logarithm function that is uh, in that library. Although we won't be using logarithms, uh, we'll be using square roots today. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do import math, of course, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, for importing, it's just uh, pretty simple, actually. Uh, it's just import math, you know, no parentheses, no all this weird characters or something like that. But uh, we are going to need input because we're going to be making a, Py a Pythagorean theorem program. And uh, what a Pythagorean theorem is, or what the Pythagorean theorem is, uh, it's the formula to find the or one of the sides, one of the missing sides of a right triangle. It's most commonly used to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Uh, so it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I actually have a little math worksheet here pulled up. And you can see here we have a right triangle. And this is the hypotenuse, the longest side. And uh, the hypotenuse is always c. So that's c squared. But, um, well, it's not c squared. It's just c, but, you know, the... The uh, formula calls for c squared, and we'll get to that in a second. But these two other legs are either a or b. It doesn't matter which one these are, but uh, as long as they're not c, because c is always the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, and you can tell it is the longest side because it is opposite of the right angle. So what we're going to be doing now is we are going to try to get the uh, length of side a and length of side b from the user. So whenever we take input, we need to prompt the user. So what we're going to be doing is, let's just say, please enter the value of side, oops, of side, that's two spaces. I am really picky about my typing. Um, whenever I see a typo, I have to go back and fix it. But uh, all right, so there we go. We prompt the user, please enter the value of side A. Now we need our variable, so a equals int input, and just like that. And then we're going to pretty much the same thing, but I'm lazy, so I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it right below it. But I'm going to change a to b, wherever you see it. Just so, I mean, we basically have the same thing, I'm just too lazy to type all of it out again. So we have print, please enter the value of side a, and then whatever they answer is going to be a because it equals in input uh, print please enter the value of side B B equals in input so there we'll have uh, the value of side A and the value of side B so now what we need to do is of course a squared plus B squared so we need to have a squared and B squared because right now we only have a and B so simply we're just going to uh, multiply a times itself so we're just going to do a a equals parentheses a times a and then we'll do just about the same thing for b, 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 b times b. All right. So now we have a squared and b squared. 
but we need to add them together now. So you guessed it. AB equals um, parentheses. Oops, almost forgot it. AA plus BB. Bada bing. So now we have the whole left side of our equation uh, gone and uh, finished. So what we need to do now are the um, actual square rooting of AB. And if you probably, I think, depending on your school district, um, if you're if you're young and you're trying to do this, if you haven't passed or have if you haven't done, uh, I want to say algebra one. If you haven't done algebra one yet, or maybe even pre-algebra, but uh, if you haven't done one of those, you probably don't know the whole rules with square rooting. Uh, you might though. I'm not not trying to diss you anything. I'm just just saying you may not know what's going on. I'm going to explain. Um, a squared plus b squared, of course, those are exponents. And let's say you have um, a variable that is squared, such as c squared. Now, if I did a square root um, to a squared variable, so let's say I took the square root of, um, let's say, a squared, the square root would cancel out the squared exponent, so it would just be a. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be square rooting the whole equation. And the thing of it is this. Let's say I'll just put a random number right there. And let's say that's our, this is a squared plus b squared. Let's say that's just, for the heck of it, let me delete some numbers. Probably won't be quite that long. But let's say that that is our uh, value for a squared plus b squared. Now what we'll have is we'll have c, and then, wait, where's that little thingy that means the exponent? Hold up, let me find it. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Okay, I can't find it. Never mind. All right, there's a little I or icon or little character. Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. There we go. That thing. So that means c squared. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna square root the whole thing, and then the square. Root, of course, when you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation. A little algebra lesson here. But uh, so you're gonna square root. Take the square root of seven. 88, and you're going to take a square root of c squared, and of course, the square root of c squared is just c, and whatever the square root of 788 is c. So, let's carry on with our program, get that out of the way. So, we have our left side of the equation, and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the actual, wool. now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing, <laughs> that was kind of weird, but uh, now what we're doing is are the uh, square roots. So, we're going to do math.square root. That's math.sqrt, a little abbreviation for square root, and then you're going to do an open parenthesis, and then we'll put our, val our value <laughs> our value for a, b, um, and that would be, of course, a squared plus b squared, and then we would have our value for c, whatever this math.square root uh, a, b, whatever that equals, that is c. So what we can do, uh, actually we'll have to do set a variable, oops. Almost forgot. So we'll do c equals math dot square root. My bad. And what we're gonna do is we're going to print, and we'll we'll make it look nice, and we'll say the length of oops, my bad of side c is semicolon, bam, print c. All right. Now, we pretty much have our whole program here, and I'll go over it real quick, and then we can debug it, see if it works. Import math, and what we're doing is just importing the library, and then we're prompting the user, asking for the side A. Uh, then we have the input of side A, or whatever they input after we prompt the user it will equal side A. Same thing with B. We ask for side B, whatever the input after that will equal B. Here, we're, making, we're turning A into A squared, and we're turning B into B squared by... Setting AA equal to A times A, which is also A squared, and BB equals B times B. And then what we're doing is we're adding AA and BB together to make AB, and that is our left side of the equation. And then we're square rooting it to find C. And then what we're doing is we're printing the length of the side C, or length of side C is, and then we're printing C. So let's run this. Oops, didn't mean to hit that. Let's run this. And okay, and let's actually look. I'm pretty sure these will work out. These would be nice whole numbers if I do these. So we'll do 12 and 16. So here we go. 
Let's do 12 and 16. See, the length of side C is 20. So that would mean that this is 20 right here. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope I could help you out. Um, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to get the latest updates for when the new ones come out. I'm thinking about actually going really deep into this Pythagorean theorem one and making it so, like, for, for right here, what we just did is um, we just made it if you have A and B. But let's say we have C and A. Uh, we could do a loop. Or well, not a loop, but we could do if and else statements and practice those. Um, I probably wouldn't make it like a normal episode of the thing because it's not really a tutorial. It'd be like a practice episode or something like that. But uh, that is it. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you get all the check out the new ones. Don't forget to like. If you need some help, just leave something in the comment section. And once again, I cannot thank you enough for a hundred subscribers. And I will see you guys later.